Many development teams are already running unit tests as part of their workflow to verify application logic is correct. Wouldn't it be great if we could run memory profiling as part of unit tests as well? Imagine you can write a test that checks for memory leaks or a test that fails in case memory traffic exceeds some thresholds. Dot memory unit allows us to do that. Let's see how. We have an application here that runs a game of life simulation in various Petri dishes. The memory profiler is attached to it and we want to make sure that when we remove all Petri dishes, they are all garbage collected properly. Let's capture a snapshot and make sure this is the case. Let's dive into our snapshots and then navigate to the list of all objects. In the list of objects, we can search for our Petri dish class and see there are still instances in memory. If we look at the key retention paths, we can see the objects are held in memory by a timer event handler somewhere. In unit testing, we often start with a red test, a test that fails when we first run it, so let's do that. I already created a boilerplate test that removes a Petri dish from the main window and checks that the Petri dish is removed from the collection of dishes. If we run this test, it somehow succeeds. That's weird. The objects are no longer in the collection, but we clearly saw in the profiler that they are still in memory. Now let's add that memory unit and make it a memory test. That memory unit is a free tool as long as you don't need to open a snapshot in the UI, but it's perfect for testing. It's distributed as a NuGet package, which we can add to our project, or we can use the quick fix, like so. Once we have it, we can start writing our tests. Calling into .memory.check captures a memory snapshot, which we can then analyze in a lambda. We can traverse objects in the snapshots, filter them by type or namespace or whatever, and then assert the object counts. Basically the same investigation we did in the UI earlier. Let's compile it and run our tests. The test runner recognizes we are using .memory unit, and we can now run our test under it. The test seems to fail, confirming what we saw in the profiler UI earlier. From the test runner window, we can now open the snapshot that was collected during tests and analyze it in that memory. Again, we can see indeed the Petri dish object is not removed from memory because of a timer event handler. We can fix this by making sure that our event handler is unsubscribed properly. Let's uncomment this line of code here. If we now compile and run our test again, we will see that it succeeds and the Petri dish objects are removed from memory now. Our game of live application is running and we attached a memory profiler. The game has been running for a while. Let's collect the snapshots. We are interested in memory traffic of our application, so let's dive in there. This doesn't look too good. We have quite some megabytes of memory traffic for this simple application which probably means we are allocating and collecting too many objects. This is something that can really hurt performance, as the .NET runtime actually pauses execution for a very short time to clean up all those unused objects. After making sure .memory unit is referenced, we can use the assert traffic attribute in our tests. Here's a simple test that runs our game of life for 100 steps. We can decorate the test method with the assert traffic attribute, and make sure it allocates a maximum of say one megabyte of memory. Now let's compile and run our test under dot memory units. The test seems to fail, which means we're allocating more than one megabyte of memory. We could open our memory snapshot from the test result window here, but instead let's see if we can fix our issue. In our Petri dish object, for every generation we are generating the cells on screen on every run. This method here basically throws away old cells and allocates new cells. The fix here is to use our optimized version of this method, which instead of throwing away existing cells, just updates their state and reuses them. If we now compile and go back to our test class and run our test again, we can see that the allocated memory is now within the bounds we set, less than one megabyte. We have started profiling our Game of Live application and are collecting allocations in that memory. We already captured one snapshot when the application was not running the simulation. Now let's execute a few steps of the simulation, like so, and then capture another snapshot. We want to look at the comparison of memory traffic in both snapshots. 
Let's group our objects by namespace. We can see that there are several cell arrays being generated. Our code was already optimized to reuse existing cell objects, but it seems each step is still creating a new array of cells. We can recreate our profiling session as a test using .memory unit. In this test, we can create a new Petri dish and then capture a snapshot. Next, we can run one step of the simulation and then capture another snapshot. In the second capture, we are using the .memory lambda to compare both snapshots and verify that no new cell arrays have been created between both. Now let's run our test and see what happens. A test failure. We can open our snapshot from within the test runner. Once it loads, we can view our two snapshots that we created during tests, which is nice, and we can do the same comparison and compare memory traffic. It seems that our test is actually testing the correct thing. A new cell array has been created between both snapshots. In our code, we can fix this by not recreating the array here. We can now compile and then run our test again. And as we can see, the problem is now solved. No new cell arrays are being generated. It's great to have developers run memory profiling unit tests, but ideally we want this to be part of our CI. For TeamCity, this is kind of easy. We have to download the .memory unit plugin and then install it into our own TeamCity server. This can be done from the administration area under plugins. From here, we can easily upload the plugin. After restarting the TeamCity service, we can configure that memory unit to run with any test runner step we have. In the settings of this test runner step here, we can enable that memory unit and then specify the path to it. For this build, we are using the dot memory unit nuget package which contains the executable. If we look at our project on disk, we can see the path where the executable is located and that's also the relative path we want to specify in TeamCity. We can also download that memory unit separately, in which case we would have to specify that path instead. Let's save this step and then we can trigger a new build. We can watch build progress and wait for it to complete. Once completed, we can see it contains a few failing tests. Under the artifacts, we can find the memory snapshots that were generated by that memory unit and we can download them and open them on our machine for further inspection. On other CI servers like VSTS or Jenkins, the workflow is similar. We will need the .memory unit command line tool in our project and then add a command line build step that calls into the command line .memory unit executable. We will have to specify the path to our actual test runner, in this case nUnit, and then specify the path to our test assembly. We can also copy any .memory workspace files to our drop folder so that we can download them to our machine and inspect them locally. In this case, we specified that we want to copy any .dmw files to our drop folder. And once the build completes, we can see in the drop folder that indeed it contains the .memory workspaces. Validating application logic with unit tests is quite awesome. And with that memory unit, we can verify memory behavior is good as well. Give it a try. We have a sample project available which demonstrates several tests and memory issues to play with. Till next time.